Hi, so now we know how to solve optimal control problems using the Hamiltonian. Today what we're going to look at is a slight variation on that theme. It turns out that in economics there's a certain kind of problem that we'll find ourselves studying that has a special property that means that we use a slightly different version of the Hamiltonian to study it. Let's take a look. In economics, we're often going to be concerned with a particular kind of optimal control problem known as autonomous problems. And autonomous problems are of the following form. First, the objective function, or rather the integrand in the objective function, has two parts. One is this, where notice time does not enter at all. And the other is an exponential function. In other words, time only explicitly enters the maximization in a form that basically looks like discounting. Second, in an autonomous problem, you have that the state equation is also not a function of time. And of course, as usual, we need x0 to be given. Well, here are the necessary conditions that we need for an optimum that we derived earlier. Let's see what they look like one by one. The first thing we need to do is to write down the Hamiltonian, which is this, the integrand plus lambda times g of x and u. We can suppress time here for simplicity. This is the Hamiltonian for an autonomous problem. Let's go with the first condition. First condition tells us that the derivative of this with respect to the control variable is zero. And of course, that's just the derivatives of f and g with respect to their second arguments, u. The next condition is this one. And let's write again the Hamiltonian and figure out its derivatives. With respect to x, it's going to be the derivative with respect to the first arguments of each of g and f. Last of all, we have this condition, but of course we know that's just going to recover for us the state equation because the derivative of this with respect to lambda is zero and lambda is here multiplicatively. So, everything looks straightforward. However, in the case of autonomous problems, there's going to be an alternative way of trying to generate our desired conditions. That's going to be using what's called the current value Hamiltonian. Call it H squiggle. The Hamiltonian we've been talking about so far, strictly speaking, is called the present value Hamiltonian. The current value Hamiltonian, H squiggle, is defined as 
the regular Hamiltonian times E to the RT. How's that going to help us? Well, let's figure it out. H squiggle is this times E to the RT. Let's multiply both terms by that. Notice this just disappears. Leaving us with this expression, notice that we can define a new co-state variable mu that simply equals this, and then we can rewrite our current value Hamiltonian more simply in terms of mu, which looks much simpler. Notice time is no longer a function of this, so you can see why this might be useful. And how do we distinguish between lambda and mu? Well, we can think of lambda as being the value of our state or related to the value of our state in terms of the present. In other words, it has to be discounted back. Whereas mu is in units, so to speak, that tell you the value at the time that you're measuring x and u. That's why it's called current value. And the other one is called present value. In this case, we're going to have slightly different conditions. It will still be true that the derivative of the current value Hamiltonian with respect to the control variable is zero, and that's of course clear. That condition for h is going to be the same as for h squiggle because they're just separated by a constant that's unrelated to u. Now, this condition, however, will be different. And the analogous condition that we're going to have, not concerning lambda but concerning mu, is going to be this. And finally, this condition is also going to hold. So the only thing that changes is the middle condition that gives us the co-state equation. Now, how do we show that this is equivalent to this? Well, very simple. We have the definition of mu here. So let's just derive this with respect to time. First, I'm going to put this over here. So divide both sides by e to the rt. And now let's derive both of these things with respect to time. Here you get lambda prime. And here we get mu prime times e to the rt minus r times all of that. Now multiply both sides by to the RT. And we get this. Now let's evaluate this expression here. The derivative of the current value Hamiltonian with respect to the state variable X. Well, here it's just going to be the derivative of f with respect to the first argument. Same here for g. And we get this expression. We can replace this with minus this, since that's what this equation tells us. And remember what mu is. It's just e to the rt lambda. Place that here. Now divide both sides by 
e to the rt. And here we'll get e to the minus rt. This will cancel. And this will cancel. And you can see, therefore, that this condition here yields an equation that is exactly the same as the co-state equation that we got with a present value Hamiltonian. So we've shown that in the case of autonomous problems, you can just work in the usual way with the present value Hamiltonian. But there's a slightly simpler approach using the current value Hamiltonian that will also work, where you have a slightly different co-state variable and a different condition here that you need to generate the co-state variable. The derivative of the current value Hamiltonian with respect to the state variable should equal r mu minus u prime. We've shown that the two approaches are in fact equivalent. So now we know how to set up the current value Hamiltonian or the present value Hamiltonian and use either one to solve any optimal control problem as long as it's autonomous.